it's the largest Sri Lankan thing. So I wrote and I actually threw it into the dustbin but when I when I figured out uh, the the responses that I I I thought was uh, more uh, more deep. Uh, and I also took that as an unlearning opportunity. Time, it gave me an opportunity to unlearn many things that I had learned in my life. So what I figured out was that there was a great rupture because in school we've learned history. There is no history, there are histories, you know, and, and space, there's no space, there are spaces. There's culture, there's no one culture, there's, there's nothing homogenous, right? Uh, so it, it's a, uh, oh, it's um, a little bit of effective element in the slide. Sure, you have to uh, make it a dana, right? So, make it by the people who are watching it from the Zoom. Make them a screen sharing thing. Screen sharing. Where do you become happy to pay? Not this one. Uh, that, I don't know. As yeah, as they, see they, they see this. Yeah. As as see I, I'm going to show all these things. There's no, nothing that's secret about it. <laughs> <laughs> so there's a big rupture, rupture in history, rupture in identity, rupture. So uh, there's there's nothing that I mean. There are some things that are continuing. There are some things that are broken. But the but the main story comes out of colonialism, basically. Right? And then the story is not one story doesn't have one dimension, it's multi-dimensional, but I'm going to show one dimension of that because we don't have that much time, right? So let me let me move around and and first of all, I'm, I'm going to make points and I'll say first of all, second to make it easy. First of all, Colombo was produced by outsiders, not by Sri Lankans. You know, there's no uh, uh, evolutionary story about this. And and when I when I learn urban history, they talk very nicely about the evolution, the the city and the hinterland. Nothing like that here. It's uh, you can see that it is a foreign element because it's close to the water, you know, and uh, uh, it's connected to another place through the harbor. Uh, it's uh, the people who lived there protected themselves from the locals through a fort. Uh, they had a fetoria where, you know, like they collected things and they shipped back to, to Lisbon and Porto. And there were churches, you know, like which was new to, to that place. So it was a foreign place, basically, right? The, the, the Portuguese Colombo. And it was a young, white, male Christian city because even, even uh, women were not allowed in that. So it was a, it was a male city. Uh, and they also brought the hatred to its Muslims. They didn't know very much about, the Portuguese did not know very much about uh, uh, Hindus and, and other people, but they, but they definitely knew Muslims are our enemies. So they, they sacked them, you know, they, they chased them away from those places. And even Bro here says, you know, uh, it was imposed on Sri Lankan people without their consent, basically. And that's exactly the point that I'm, I'm uh, taking, uh, continuing. So, uh this was actually a part of actually if you can see on the on the uh right hand side right so uh those lines are of the ship which is called Carrera, Carrera da india and and there were ports along that and using those ports they created a sea space which is new uh at that time because we 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 know about this land-based empires but this is a sea-based empire with with uh, with the cities marking the, the periphery, and Colombo was one of them. I mean, of course, they didn't come to Colombo. They, they, they came for Muslims and stayed for cinnamon, as Colin Adisila argues in his book, right? And then, of course, it is organized, but how, how was this organized? This world was organized. The, there was a line that, that divides the Portuguese area and the Spanish area because they were fighting for territories and, and so on, and wanting spices, you know, Columbus going in, in, in one direction, creating, practicing the idea that world is a globe, right? Because people may have talked about this, Navagraha and all these things would have said the same thing, but, but nobody had practiced. I can, we can go in, in two different directions and get to the same place. 
That was first practiced by Columbus and Gama, right? And then of course, who can draw the line? Pope, the only person that they would listen to, right? So Pope drew the line and said, this side is for Portuguese, uh, this side is for Spanish, Spanish, this side is for Portuguese, but the Portuguese could not stick to the line, so they got beaten up. So Pope had to shift the line. This is the, the, the lower one. Sure. So when the, when the Pope shifted the line, Brazil became a part of the Portuguese empire, right? And so on. So, so what I'm trying to show is kind of like they were creating a world, they were constructing a world, which did not exist before, right? Uh, and the other images that you've seen. Mm, yeah, and and I don't and and I don't want to say that that the the that the uh, uh, impact was in one direction. That is, the Portuguese were impacting the colonists, but the colonists were also impacting uh, Portugal. I mean, if you go to Lisbon, there was a there was a place where there were different streets uh, that 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 sold and and showed. All these elements that came from different parts of the world, the African street and the Asian street and so on. So, and then they even developed a new style of architecture because they had a lot of lot of wealth. So it's called the Manuelin style because King Manuel, you know, it was in, in his name, right? And then, of course, I'm not going through this too much, you know, like you guys can ask any questions. Uh, the colonial cities were divided and unequal. There was a white city and a black city. If it's in China, there was a white city and a Chinese city, right? And 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 so on. So uh, uh, it's it's divided in regard to race, power, and resources, right? And uh, the Brits actually kind of like pushed everybody out. So the native city, which is the black city, would have basically people selling I don't know vegetables and and things like that, right? And but all the power institutions, uh, the the governor, the military, uh, everything you know, the 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 uh, the courts, everything was on the white side of the city. So it was. Uh, uh, and number two, Ceylon, the island, was never a political entity. Never. It was it was created into a political entity by the Europeans. What I mean by a political entity is, if you see the map on the left-hand side, those days, the power of the of the ruler gradually diminished as, as you went away. We call this a frontier, not a not a boundary. The difference between a boundary and a frontier is like it's like hen go thing. Like the 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 farmer would go as far as the farmer could go, and you stop. Right? It's a it's a boundary. There's no but uh, sorry frontier boundary means I cannot build outside of my land because there's somebody else else on the other side. There's another land. Somebody else owns that. So there was no boundary as such. Even during the Kandurata Kingdom, right? It's not Kandyan Kingdom. It's Kandurata. Uh, uh, the Nurakalavi area was kind of like sometimes not known very well for them. Uh, so, uh, so during the First World War between England and France, you know, uh, which ended in 1796, uh, they fought, especially with uh, uh, British, fought especially against the Nether Dutch uh, in the Indian Ocean. So it was a world war, right, basically. And during that war, the Dutch said, asked the colonies to join the Batavia Republic. Let's defeat the British and join the Batavia Republic, which is Dutch East Indies, which became Indonesia. So there was a good possibility if the Dutch won, this island would have been a part of Indonesia. Indonesia has a much of many islands. And then actually it was taken over by the Madras forces because there was it was not the Brit, not Britain, which was ruling what we call India today. It was the uh, East India Company. It had uh, three presidencies, Calcutta, Bombay, and Madras. It was the Madras forces that took over this Ceylon, right? which was still the coastal area. And uh, uh, all the, uh, the colonies that the, that the company had were put together later on to produce British India in the middle of the 19th century. 
had had the uh, company continued its position, this Ceylon would have become a part of British India. <clears throat> Uh, and then there are other ideas, you know, like the, this. This could have been a Muslim state, you know, like and so on. That's that's another find, historical finding. Uh, nonetheless, in 1802, the British decided that they're going. Uh, India is very important in in regard to revenues and so on. So they wanted. They did not want Ceylon to be a part of uh, the company, under the company. So they created what is called a crown colony. There were crown colonies. So that is what separated this, this island. Now, how different it is? Very different. Because it was homogeneous. The power of Colombo was the same in Jaffna and in Kandy and in Gaul. It's not like the Kandurad kingdom. It's a very different political entity. But it is a colony, not a nation. And <clears throat> So it was under Colombo, and after 1815, after the British took over the Kandur Rata, uh, uh, which, is, which is in short form Kande, you know, Kandy. Uh, and so they, 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 they organized this land into five provinces and districts. What are these provinces? Administrative provinces. They administer the, the, uh, uh, the colonized and revenue districts to kind of like get the revenue. So they, they connected all this from Colombo through a road, road system, uh, subjugating uh, the capitals, connecting the capitals of the provinces and the uh, uh, districts, so subjugating to Colombo. So it's a structuration process. It's not a, it's not a uh, infrastructure that, that would provide some facility. It was, it was a way of organizing. So, uh, yeah, so this Colombo was now connected through the harbor to another place. So this was not a capital. This was not a social entity as such, because this was a colony basically, right? Uh, so Colombo never evolved from its hinterland, Ceylon. It produced the hinterland. So this is where you know a lot of urban studies kind of like go wrong, and and now you can start thinking, then how did India operate? You know, like we, because the Indian urbanization begins in a very different way. It's not it's not this old uh, thing that you know that happened in, in the United States as well, right? Anyway, and then now that they have established a administrative and revenue system, they would introduce capitalism, and I'm going to be very brief about this, because in this country, this capitalism is highly di discussed. But capitalism for me is not a thing that happens in every country, but it is something that, that was developed in Europe as a capitalist world economy, and they incorporated peripheral areas into that, right? I'm, I'm using the uh, uh, world systems perspective. And so Ceylon was incorporated in the middle of the 1800s. Uh, and in, in, in my book, which I can send, I very clearly uh, uh, talked about how capitalists were produced. There were no capitalists, right? Capitalists were produced through the administrative offices, how land was produced through commodification, through Mudubim Panatha, right? How capital was brought in through banks and the Ceylonese were not uh, entitled for that at the beginning how the crop was organized through the uh, uh, botanical garden system, which was the system of economic botany. The, the capital was in uh, 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 at Kew Gardens, you know, and they, they did research and they classified and categorized plants so that they can actually move things around, right? And, and, and nowadays people go to the botanical garden at Peradini to kind of like figure out What's the real name of this? You know, that kind of stuff, which actually was uh, produced for a different reason. Oops. And the labor, the Candians kind of like did not do, you know, were not very good in, in providing labor. So they brought labor from uh, India, basically, largely. Uh, by the 1850s, uh, even women had settled down. Uh, a market, they created a market by reducing the export import tax in England for 
Silanese coffee, right? So Silanese coffee was favored. It was not a natural market. So all these things put together, they produced a, a plantation, if you want to call sector, I don't like that word, and an area which is compatible with the with the capitalist world economy. Now it can work with because if we if we grow beans on on a backyard, that cannot go to the world bank or world uh, market, right? So they created this. So they transformed Ceylon into an economy, which we 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 talk about, and connected that to the to the world economy through Colombo. Now Colombo operates as a center of Accumul capital accumulation and diffusion. Uh, and it had the uh, control and command centers, uh, banks, agency houses, chamber, you know, chamber, which I will talk later. And uh, so the communication network, if you want to call that, or the infrastructure was now overlain with economic. Uh, aspects. Uh, now, Colombo Candy Road, which was actually based on a rivalry because Candy was uh, fighting against Colombo, now all of a sudden it, it becomes defined as an economic connection and Candy becomes the center of the planters, right? So it, it uh, pretty much, uh, it, it became a comparable economic space. So at the beginning, before uh, they organized Ceylon into administrative and revenue districts. They also had to take over, you know, uh, uh, invade basically. So they, <clears throat> there was an interesting discussion about whether we need forts or roads. I think governor during the time of Governor Barnes, they decided to go with roads because they, then they can uh, colonize. So roads were organized, so they, they had maps. They produced maps of the area. And then there were uh, 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 small military posts, you know, along the roads. So that was the uh, uh, purpose and the meaning of roads. So you can see the lingo, the language coming in. Uh, James Tennant, who was a, a colonial secretary, uh, wrote in the middle of the century that Sri Lanka, the Ceylon, has now seen an industrial revolution. Now there were no industries, it's something like an industrial revolution. Now you can see they, they speak in the language they know, right? So so now, of course, you know, like the locals can- Emerson Huh? Emerson Yeah, yeah. yeah. James Tennant. James Emerson Tennant. <laughs> and uh, so I think the peak is between the 1860s and 1880s, you know, like, uh, uh, <laughs> The uh, uh, there was a big, big, big change in Colombo. A lot of people know, you know. I mean, I learned that also in architecture school a long time ago. So it's a very well known thing. The harbor was expanded, uh, golf face was created, the 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 walls of the fort were demolished, you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. New uh, hotels come in and so on. Uh, so it's uh, it becomes actually a global city on the one hand, because uh, it's actually called the Clapham Junction of the East at that time. Right, which is the which is the busiest junction in London, uh, and then uh, also the British expanded the cultural space, so the British now moved to Cinnamon Gardens to live. Now they can come to work from Cinnamon Gardens, in some sometimes in rickshaws, with this aura of being you know powerful people, right? and so. Uh, so I think, you know, when we talk about this expansion, I want you to remember one little thing. When we talk about this expansion, even Cain de Silva, the, the well-known historian, talks about uh, 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 Ceylon having, he even talks Sri Lanka. He talks about Sri Lanka from 2000 years ago. Uh, I mean, I don't know about the, his history, but but he, he talks about, uh, uh, he, he gives credit to the expansion of the economy. True, Ex you know, there are, necessary and sufficient conditions, you know. So that's, that's, that's necessary, but it's not sufficient. The sufficient condition was for me, when I look at it, is the political victory. Now they don't have to be 
in the fort, they can actually move around because they also were in slave island, various places, using the Berry Lake for, for various things, going to Nurelia, you know, like and so on. So they became very free. For me, that happens with the 1848 uprise when it's, you know, like, so society and space doesn't change in tandem. The change in society and space, if I may use some technical terms, uh, are not are neither isomorphic, no isotemporal. They happen, you know, like I mean, they, they they work together, but they don't go at the same time, right? Uh, so uh, so this uh, change that we see in the eighteen sixties to eighties is actually is the necessary condition was the was the uprise of eighteen forty eight. But the most impactful thing about colonialism, the European colonialism, is uh, epistemic. Iberians first changed the geography, right? And, uh, uh, and then they started uh, So, uh, Europeans did not just come with guns alone. They, they were building a knowledge of the other, right? I'll come to the other in a minute. But they were, they were building a knowledge of the, of the other places. Now, uh, Edward Said highlights, you know, and there are, there were many other, there are many other scholars who've talked about, when, the, when, when, when Napoleon's forces walked into Egypt, uh, they had surveyors, archeologists, you know, anthropologists and all sorts of people. They were going to document this place. So when the French produced the knowledge of Egypt, Egypt did not have a similar knowledge of, of, the, of France. This is actually the point. This is why I would argue Ceylon is still under colonialism. So uh, let's go back and, 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 and see what they were producing. Uh, they produced an Indian Ocean space, uh, a, a linear and hierarchical urban structure, and also the meridian. Now it's moved to uh, Greenwich, right? And then eventually they would organize the geography as a grid. First they globalized through going around. Now it becomes it becomes a grid of longitudes and latitudes. Now, if the whole globe is a grid of longitudes and latitudes. We know every place, right? Every place has a coordinate. So this is get, becoming extremely powerful just using knowledge. Is it true knowledge? No, this is a produce, produce knowledge. Now they have to get other people to familiarize into, you know, buy into this knowledge. And they would organize plants categorized and classified, and then they would have to get other people to agree to that. Right? And they would organize animals, humans, right, races and so on, and, and so on. They would organize the entire world, right? So another thing is, you know, like, I mean, uh, they would, they would defamiliarize this space. Like when the sea becomes an empire, Empires become an archipelago. So that's because now they, they become broken, basically. <clears throat> I'll give you an example of this. Uh, this is from a geography book that the kids read, right, uh, in school. Uh, probably would be until the Second World War, at least. So you can see, I'm not going to read this. If you, you guys can read this fast if you want. Uh, the meaning of empire, the first sentence, first number one begins with the temperate zones are the most desirable regions of the earth. So <clears throat> they not only produce power, now they're justifying it, use it, making it into a science, right? Now we go to school and learn science because this is like climatically justified now because the 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 uh, most uh, uh, civilized people come from a very particular region of the earth, temperate zones. And number two, we can see the savages in the tropical forest, they don't need any of these things. 
they have enough fruit and food and everything. They can pluck things and eat and they're fine, right? So I'm not joking. I'm just, I have this book at the home. So uh, if anyone wants. So they would, how would they organize? I mean, I'll, uh, they would compartmentalize, right? This is something new. Working in Fort, residence in Cinnamon Gardens, go, go to Norley for vacation, uh, recreation at golf is, you know, etc. So this is very unfamiliar to local people. You get lost in your own land. We don't do this, right? And so incorporated in the capitalist world economy, I talked about plans and so on. So there's a new epistemic structure. How we think is changed. So how did they get the upper hand? Because Edward Said would argue that is positional superiority. It's not because science is right and anything is wrong. I mean, there is, science is a good thing. I'm not saying it's wrong, but to say that's, that's all that is good, you know, that's, that's a problematic thing, right? Uh, so what they're doing is universalizing the specific. They have a knowledge, maybe there are knowledges in China and Arab and all these different places, but they are saying our knowledge is true and other things are not true. This is where Eurocentrism trumps. Because if you go to China, they also think other people are uh, uh, savages. They say they have a word called way, right? So, I mean, maybe Sri Lankans think it's only the Sinhalese are, are, are civilized. But the, but the thing is, the European notion becomes common because of their power, right? So that's the difference uh, here. So, uh, so people now have, now live in unfamiliar world, they're angry, probably, as uh, Franz Fanon would say. Uh, but also, when they talk about this, you know, they keep writing. So many uh, European scholars have written about this place. Why do they write? Because they want to they want to understand this place. You know, I mean, I don't think they are doing it in a very evil way. They they are trying to understand it in their own way. When they translated Mahavamsa, they also in included a map because that's how they understand, right? So, so there's a map. What does the map convey? It is the archaeological knowledge or the British knowledge of this place, right? So we learn this and we think, oh, this is the knowledge, right? Because we are also now transformed to understand that structure. Of course, you know, like uh, Trim Min Ha would say, a conversation of us that is the Europeans, with, uh, with us with us, right? Uh, about them is a conversation in which them is silenced. They don't have a voice. Them always stands on the other side of the hill, naked and speechless, you know, without a voice, barely present in its absence. So knowledge changes the land, subjectivity and identity displaces the subjects and silences the other. They reestablish themselves. The only way they can reestablish themselves is through refamiliarize. Either you expel these, these guys or refamiliarize subjectivities, spaces, culture, and identity. And that's, I think, what happened for the most part. So Franz Fanon would say, you know, like the anger turns into envy because, you know, like these guys are so great. We, now we like to be with like these guys, you know, uh, uh, and uh, actually the, the Sri Lankan people, uh, sorry, Silanese people uh, went to England 30 years before uh, Indians. And they were so much into like, uh, oh, really? Okay. Who is this? Okay, okay. Yeah, but but yeah, I mean, in a general sense, I mean, Milton Singer would say it's thirty years before, and then they would they the the Silanese. Plus, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so so Milton. Okay, okay, <laughs> thanks. So uh, uh, 
uh, they were they were it's not mine as actually milton singers you know like maybe it's not correct so uh, uh, he would argue that that uh, uh, the the silanis would be more keen to kind of like out english the english you know which is impossible to do anyway uh, Okay, I'm going to move fast here. So I think, you know, like since I said, you know, like, I mean, I was, I, I will look into space. Uh, actually, the, the transformation is kind of evident in the clock tower, because if you take the clock tower in Fort, uh, it's actually a, a lighthouse, which says that this city is connected to outside, basically, you know, like, I mean, it's for, it's for the, it's for ships. And then the clock would say now, how important is time, right? Which is which is the Western time, right? And then uh, uh, restructured space. I I discussed uh, the spaces of time, uh, nomenclature. You know, like I mean, how you, how it's named, uh, Horton Place, Barnes Place, you know, and so on, giving names of people important to the the, the Brits uh, and uh, the governors as well as royal family, uh, Guildford Crescent, and so on. And then actually uh, the highest place, you know, in addition to writing books, the, the main place is where they would uh, uh, enable the, 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 the subject formation is the museum. So they would actually place the history that they, that they, read, they wrote about the locals uh, in a British building, you know, uh, with the governor in front. Uh, so people from all sorts of different places can come in busloads and, and figure out the heritage of theirs. And actually, when the British left, they also built a building that they thought would be would be a way to continue uh, building. That's the independence bit. So uh, I'm not going to repeat this because this is a this is uh, this is repeating. Uh, so. One thing that we have to be very careful about, about is imported knowledge changes the ground. Right? Uh, I've written a paper called Importing Problems. Right? <laughs> that is uh, how the importing of the housing ordinance of 1915 transformed Kochikade into a slum. Right? And then you know, people can say positivists have a different view because that existed, you know, and so on. But I would argue that 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 it was turned into a slum because of this importation of a particular knowledge. So have to be extremely careful of importing, which is continuing. So what are the reactions to colonialism? Because colonials don't have the power to just build everything and nothing would happen. The people would be spectators here, right? So I don't think any of the systems are complete, whether capitalism, colonialism, or anything. And uh, Partha Chatterjee, um, I'm, I'm get, taking a quote from Partha. Uh, uh, so, I mean, all systems have uh, exceptions. Rules have exceptions. Even the even the Chinese rule of one one child per family has an ex has exemption, exceptions. So, another way to look at this is not by not to look at from the center, which I did so far from the colonial perspective to, to look, look from the other side, from the exceptions. What do the exceptions say about the rule? Is that a fair way to kind of like talk about the locals, how they, how they uh, responded? So I would argue colonialism is incomplete. I mean, they didn't even rule the, the villages, you know, like in, in, in that sense. Uh, nonetheless, the locals familiarized. I mean, the, the villagers familiarized in the colonial system probably ha happened in the 1960s, 70s. So when the locals in, uh, uh, anger turns into envy, they would begin to indigenize because they would now move to Colombo to do jobs, to live, to do various things. So, uh, National elite would indigenize the city, right? Um, when I say elite, there would be economic elite, political elite, as well as administrative elite, right? Uh, I would refer to like three of these kinds. They were conservative. We already talked about trying to out English the English. They were actually looking at 
or what they have within this system. They were not questioning the system in, 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 in any substantive way. Uh, the Buddhist revival, uh, th there's enough studies about this, the protestantization of Buddhism and so on in this struggle. So there is, there is some uh, questioning, but yet at the same time, it lends to, to uh, becoming subjects. Can you explain what is the system? Yeah. Can I finish this? And yeah. All the people who uh, brought this Buddhist revival were against Pakistan. Dana Sabhashan and that other India. They completely misunderstood and we do the first time. Okay, so so I'm talking about what Gananath and so on saw. No, just just hold on. Just it's okay. It's yeah. It's okay. Yeah. I think we'll have a proper dialogue, a discussion. And I think at the end of the lecture, we'll have a proper dialogue, a discussion. So uh, the workers migrated because they wanted jobs, right? So they were all coming to Colombo that the colonials produced, right? They, they lived near, around the harbor and, 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 and so on. Nonetheless, they, they were producing their own kinds of uh, 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 shelters or houses or, you know, which, the, fo the formal system would call slums and shanties. Yet at the same time, that's where they live, their homes, right? So, uh, I mean, uh, there is even the protestantization of Buddhism would actually uh, indigenize the city because because they would produce, you know, schools like Anand and Alanda. They would, so so the so it's the colonial city would not stand just. It's not only colonial. That's what I'm trying to show. Even the the elite would actually produce their own, you know, uh, uh, stores, you know, like and and in 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 Ford as well. So they are actually transforming the city. So we cannot understand the city by looking at about three percent of the people what they did to the city because there's a large group of people who are doing different things. Uh, um, what I'm saying is they didn't challenge it, but they they became a part of it. But I'll tell you, I'll show you how one cannot become a part of it. They were powerless to challenge. Sorry, they were powerless to challenge. Uh, yes and no. I think I think they accepted colonialism. I think. Like uh, like Gaza is accepting Israel, but now. No no no. So foreigners uh, foreigners foreigners naturalized like like the Dutch burgers and so on. Yeah, yeah they they naturalized. Uh, women feminized because it was a male uh, male city, uh, and villages ruralized. So the city was tremendously changed. The only problem is in urban studies or in studies, we don't talk about any of these guys. I mean, we talk about protestantization of Buddhism or for or against, but we don't talk about how the cities were. Actually, we cannot understand urbanization just by looking at capital or the power, how they transform the city. Because actually the majority are not them. So, I mean, there are discourses about this, do we should we focus on the central business district or should we focus on housing because that's that's where people live right so so th there was enormous transformation but our literature only talks about that huge transformation that the that the europeans did uh so familiarization as i said so they are going to they are there's I, I i could argue they are voluntarily subjecting themselves and we are going to live in the city that the colonies produced. So we are going to become subjects of Colombo. Yet at the same time, they would transform Colombo. Because it, it, the, the, uh, uh, it is a combination of two processes at least. You know, I don't believe in just two, but, but two. One is the subjects changing themselves. You know, like we are becoming a part of Colombo. And they have to do something that is comfortable to them. So that is why they build what other people, others call slums and shanty so whatever i mean they they have to live so in their in their own way right so and and the buddhists will have to build their own way whether it's protestantization or not right so so th this happens so they change this city but we don't have literature on this right uh, uh, so the familiarization process actually transforms the the city as much as the the sub people becoming subjects of that, so it's a it's a two way process. In in a way, 
the city has to fail to succeed. If nobody came to Colombo, it's a, it's a failure. If people came to Colombo, we could say, oh, successful. Yet they would change it, right? So, so it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's, it's a hard game. Right? Uh, so what happened? Uh, Sure. Cool. Thank you. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm I'm not talking about before the arrival of the Europeans because I don't know too much about it. Uh, I just have done studies. Mm -hmm. I read one of the books on what these writers. They are very good. Good, good, good. Good, good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to read. I mean, you know, I'm a, re I'm a good reader. We'll do that. Uh, so, uh, so the transformation is actually the city was transformed from an exclusive domain of colonial power into some into a milieu that afforded Silanese social and cultural practices. Not like in Anuradhapur or something like that, but but to a certain degree, right? Uh, so, in short, this is something like that. The the city, the center, is marked by the clock tower and so on. Uh, but then, much of the Buddhist structures come from the in uh, they, they are in the periphery, uh, uh, but also in 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 Peta and so on. So. Uh, uh, so the, so the radicals, yeah, well, let's get to that. Uh, the radicals, uh, they also, they challenged from the 1930s, the Lanka Samaj Party, the, the uh, Surimal movement, they challenged colonialism. Uh, and I would argue actually, uh, they, uh, they were the ones who built the nation in my, what this study reveals. How? Because, because a nation, from a social space standpoint, should have two main components. It should have a land, should have people, and they should be connected, right? So the land was produced by the British, or the, through the British uh, Dutch War, right? So that was there, the colony. It was a colony. And then, the Samasamajis who actually believed in the colony, you know, like, I mean, everybody who lived on the island thought it was a colony, you know, believed in that. So they went and recruited people, the marginalized people. They worked with the working class. They uh, went into villages with Queenin and uh, uh, Marmite and, and, and Dal. And then they, they went to the upcountry and they organized the uh, 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 Indian Indian workers, you know, and then so they pretty much, you know, in the in the north and so on, they they gathered them together. So somewhat completing this process of creating a nation with now there's a land, and now there's a there's a people, and then every government that came from 1948 divided it. The first act was the Citizenship Act, which kind of like you know. Uh, Pretty much, you know, took uh, the the uh, the uh, plantation workers out, you know, of the citizenship deal. Uh, however, the in order to understand how strong colonialism is, we, Sri Lankans still don't have a new map. Sri Lankans still don't have another structure. Why they accepted the colonial administrative and revenue structure? the colonial administrative and revenue structure as the nation. It's a colony. Colombo was not the capital, capital was London. Colombo did not have a state, we call colonial state. There was no state, the state was in London. So this was accepted as the state, right? So this is one of the reasons I see this, there's hardly anything that's, that's been done even the structure of, you know, territorial structure, the, you know, like uh, uh, the infrastructure, none of these things are like really touched, except for one little line to Madhamul or, or some place, you know, like uh, on the south. Uh, we still run on the on the same colonial uh, uh, infrastructure. 
uh, I mean, I, 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 I think this type of transformation where the conservatives, as I said, as I started early, and then the radicals were challenging them. This structure, I think, is pretty much gone in the 70s, 1977, uh, which I would call the, the liberal political system. Uh, I don't think I need to get there. So I would like to conclude and then uh, we can talk. So we have open for the questions. I have a comment that, uh, yeah. Um, very nice to hear the presentation. Um, very nice to hear you guys saying that, uh, that uh, the country will make sure that we have to be in the country. Uh, my question has to do with the um, yeah, you know, what I have to do is not to be um, uh, so the government is not the government that has to be 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 That's later, though. Yeah. And 
So what, what did you say about that? I didn't I didn't get the get the point. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's very central to what I'm saying, yeah. <clears throat> Okay. Okay, thanks. Yeah. And all the Can you can you guys introduce yourself at least? You know, I don't know even the names of you. <laughs> no, but I mean to to respond. You know. Yeah, please. Yes. No, but uh, what is what is this about? Is this an is this a, an argument with European states? I, I don't know. What I'm trying to say is yeah. that we have been we have been uh, brainwashed to give for the last five hundred years. We still do. Yeah, but we have we have a nice mind. But now the credit that that was demanded by the Europeans, they are ashamed of that. They are ashamed of all the things they did, despite development. You see, now the the, the inter what you call the transatlantic slave trade. Uh, that's, a, that's a shame. Uh, like as much as Germany is now repenting on what they did in, in, in the Holocaust, the same, the same, the, the same developments will incur the entire world for what they did in the last one years. That's the point I'm making. Fan fantastic. Thanks. Yes. Thank you. Yeah. Good point. Yeah, have to answer. Huh? Yes. There's nothing yeah. to answer. You know, like I mean, this is true. Okay. This, this is true. This uh, this has nothing to do with what I said. Yeah. In case I have a question to ask. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, I mean, can I can I can I know your names when you when you? Yeah, I, the only person I know here is you. <laughs> no, also. Entire world was in darkness, and they brought light. 
You see, and that is the basis on which they, they, they uh, analyze and categorize and, and spread their knowledge. We brought light. There was darkness in Africa. There was darkness in this country. No, this is, uh, I can understand these political arguments, but what I'm saying is, what you're saying is correct. You know, like, I mean, uh, what you're saying is correct. So, you know, some people are, some people are ashamed. I didn't say anything like, uh, related to what you say. <laughs> what I'm trying to say is, you know, like, of course, you know, like things can come through, you know, like, I mean, I'm, I'm also trying to understand. It's true that there was a, just the fact that there was a big capital called Anuradhapura 2,500 years ago has nothing to do with today, right? That's, that's what I'm making. So if there is a connection, we need to show that connection, right? I mean, this is the responsibility of, of, uh, of scholars. So Shireen, uh, uh, I do agree that there's enough studies gone. I mean, you know, uh, also highlighted that there was something, there was something before colonialism, right? Yeah. And and there, obviously, just can can I can I can I respond to this? Yeah, but we but we. So so the point that I'm making is 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 none of those. Point that I'm making is there was a there was a significant breach in history at this particular point, and how do we understand the present? Because when we talk about just look around, what are we wearing? What what are we you know like who are we, right? So um, uh, and so how how are our identities identities shaped? So I think. What we are escaping by showing some 2500 year old thing is that I think I think the, the important thing is we need to understand who are we today and where does it come from. So this is what I mean by historical production. This, I'm not talking about history. I'm not a historian. I'm not a historian. And I have read, you know, like this this past stuff, you know, like you know, uh, uh, the claims that, that Ceylon was a very central place uh, in trade and that kind of stuff, right? And, and you know, I, I was also wondering why did Ptolemy kind of like drew this island so big? You know, I thought like, wow, it must have been so difficult to get to, get, get around this, this not, so, not so useful place, you know? So, so the thing is, I think, I think, I think it's, it's, it's very important to kind of like read these historical facts. And, 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 but the thing is, my focus is not about 2,500 years ago or even 500 years ago. What I'm trying to understand is who are we now? Where does that come from? What is our historical production, right? And then I also said that it's Europeans were not the only ones who produced. Did I make a make a Eurocentric statement? Yes, of course. Your, but, your, your, your deconstruction, that is my view. Your question of deconstruction of the local story, right? And that's that. that well, you are not thinking that is how other if I did that, if I did that, that is a good thing because I think I think uh, I mean I'm thanks for highlighting that because I think I think I wanted to ask these questions about this this connection, right? I mean, if I had done that, that's fantastic. I, I didn't even think about that. So uh, so uh, uh, so so the so the issue is this, you know, like I mean, I I wrote a piece. I mean, this is a book that I wrote a long time ago, you know, thirty years ago. I, I wrote a piece about how how do we understand the history beyond 500 years based on what I, what I said, right? I mean, if you want, I can come and talk about this at a different time because that this is not the time. But if you can understand, how do we understand the historical production of today, right? The history, we can say history existed, people existed and so on. Hegel had argued, you know, Eurocentric again. Hegel had argued, uh, uh, I'm not with Hegel, by the way. Uh, 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 Hegel had argued that it's Europeans who have history. The other people only have a past, right? So I, I don't necessarily think so. And the problem is most of the scholars have taken these things up and they cannot see how Eurocentric they are. You know, like to kind of like, even to, even to think we had a past, that, that's exactly what they said. 
you guys are stuck in the past. This is exactly what Hegel said, right? But I think what I think it is very I think it's very important for us to understand who we are today and where where does it come from? And so and and this islander story is, I mean, people were moving back and forth until quite recently, right? That's a good thing, but but I was uh, I'm. Uh. Um, there was no Sri Lanka, madam, before. No Sri Lanka. No Ceylon either. I mean, this is why we need to understand history. There was an island. There was an island. Island was not political. Island was not never yeah. political. I mean, it's very, uh, I mean, you're not making, you're making a very controversial statement. I mean, for I'm you, happy if I'm controversial, yeah. but. Listen, in your presentation, you made a statement saying that Ceylon, that the Kalam movement is on the verge of becoming a global city. So, 19th century, you have a certain area It was, it was a global city, yeah. Which extent can legitimize if you really have the characteristics of becoming a global city compared with either Mumbai or Kolkata? Yeah, I think. The capital of the Raj, they have a university college, it's not worth it. It was Mumbai, was a mercantile capital. And when the British capital of India was shifted to New Delhi in 1911, so during that period, they were building the new Delhi blended with the Mughal architecture. That was a complete power projection. But Kalapu, did you really in the in the in the in the late? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't call V. Yeah. Because for that, you know, exactly. I mean, I, I don't Second, want to. Yeah. Just let me complete the question. Second, second, wait, wait, wait. Secondly, uh, we did we have the knowledge production capacity? I mean, did Kalapu have the knowledge production? Because you know, before Colombo University formed somewhere in the 1920s, Mumbai and Kolkata established 150 years ago. I mean, the Colombo, the entire the urban community were more focusing on schools. So they were glorifying the public school tradition in which the Indians were confined themselves to the higher academic values, Mumbai, Kolkata. So, I mean, like with all these things, I to the extent we can accept this age of there were any signs of a global, globalized. Characteristics in Globalization has to be defined in the context. The context was a uh, uh, movement. Uh, shipping yeah. was the main thing. And Colombo was a coaling station in the, uh, in the late 19th century. It was a coaling station before the, uh, uh, yeah. So before the oil burners came, right? And the the ship would take a long time to to go from say England to Aus, uh, uh, Australia. So this would be Colombo was a, was one of the major places that they stopped because it's kind of like almost like a little bit of midway kind of kind of place. So uh, and and it was turned into a coaling station. I mean we can't see it today, but there there was coal in this place. Dump, you know, and, and they would get coal and so on. People would get out and walk, walk up, right? And this is how the cricket team would play a test match or or or, or, or cricket, right? This is why the uh, the cave building, the cave building, had a, cave building had a four hundred feet long bookstore during that time. I don't think the Silanese Sil people would have read books, you know, uh, in the late 19th, uh, 19th century. It would have been so. The 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 value, the 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 only way you can explain Colombo, only way that you can understand Colombo yeah. is in that global context, and this was the major C junction. Was it cosmopolitan? It was very cosmopolitan. Cosmopolitan goes away after after independence. 
Yeah, because because uh, the uh, nationalism and so on. You know, your, your statement that people do not have books is correct partially. People had polar leaves, polar leaves, right? Yeah. The books mean the print, the printing, printing press came in the 19th century. The first printing press came to came to Palapur to Gaul. It was financed funded by the King of Siam, and it was the Lankalo, Lankalo, right? So before that, in 17th century, there were no publications. I'm not first. saying don't 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 take this out of context. Yeah. I'm not saying there were no books. Yeah. What I'm saying is <laughs> there were there were wait a minute. There were there were there was no market for a bookstore of 400 feet long among the Sri Lankan people. I mean, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying Ceylon was totally produced by the Europeans. No, I'm saying the major impact is colonial, right? And Ceylon was, I think, I think if, if you can see, I definitely demonstrated Ceylon was produced from Colombo. And Colombo was produced from the sea. I mean, if you can't see that, that's not my problem. And and then and then how it's organized, right? And 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 so on. So I'm not saying there was nothing else. There was a lot of other. Wait a, wait a, wait a minute. You you got a lot of time to talk. So uh, and uh, so so what I'm saying is that's the major thing. Then if you heard after that, I said there were the locals cannot be taken out of the equation. And I said, it's only 3% of the people who did this. And if you want to call it Eurocentrism, yes, of course, you know, that's exactly what I'm criticizing, you know, or, or questioning. And then I'm saying in our Eurocentrism is us. That's the problem because there's no literature in Sri Lanka about all these people, the, the, the women in the black city, right? Uh, the people who sold Karavala, you know, like in, in the Black City. So we don't have this. We only have, like, if you take the 100th anniversary of the Columbia Municipal Council, you only have what the, what the, what the British did, did, right? And then the people who are interested in this, they want to go beyond 500 years and up to 2000 years, right? So I think, I think if we want to know who we are, whether it's related to 600 years or 2500 years, we need to study us you know, and 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 the knowledge that we have, I'm 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 critiquing the colonial knowledge as well, and showing that actually, it's 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 below me to say that there was an evolution here. There's nothing like that. Number two, it was produced from Colombo and and from outside. Number two, it is not total. It is not total. You know, it it did not take over everything. So there were reactions. So how do we understand the reactions? I mean, I wrote a book called People's Spaces after this. You know, I'm, I'm not going to talk about that book. Yeah, and then, so I think, I think we need to develop literature, not about 2,500 years ago or 1,300 years ago. I need to be, I, need, I think we need to have literature about the local people who live now in this century. You know, when the Europeans, right? I'll give it. When they, I, I, will, I, will, I will give my own experience. If you know about cricket, you know there's something called the Vishian River system, DRS. I'm the inventor of that. It's a global. I'm the inventor of what is called the DRS. And it's everybody knows it, but they are not being acknowledged by the way. Indians are being Christian people, but that's their colonial state of mind. Now, with that apart, when, when the Europeans. I don't know, understand what is the connection to this. I mean, the, I mean I'm, I'm happy with that, that you. I'm point on this pointing is that when the Europeans try to be it. They leave out as much as possible. Of course, sir. Of course, sir. The, the Europeans went in search of India. Just wait a minute. India. And Columbus went to a place and he said, this is India. Everybody in the, in, in the, in the American continent are called Indians. So my, this is exactly what I'm questioning. We need to question this. You are not questioning it. That's the problem. You are talking about yourself. No, I'm not. You're really partly. I, I guess much better. I have a personal experience of that. Victim of European colonialism. Yes. Sorry if I missed uh, any of your questions. Yeah. Thanks. Um, I just have to say that you know, there are 
Yeah, yeah thanks. Um, yeah, absolutely. Right. Society, I would like to extend my thanks to Professor Nihal Pereira. And actually, it was a you know, from one side, it's a very audacious statement to say that Sidon is a colonial product. So, we saw the outcome, <laughs> it, it, it became a marketplace of ideas. I that's a very objective of the Royal Asiatic Society is to bring the dissenting opinion and create the dialogue, the conversation. So, thanks a lot for coming. And this this uh, special lecture is organized by the uh, publication committee. So I need to extend my thanks to all the publication committee members. And I hope that you all had a wonderful evening. And when I met you at the conference, and you be fully accepted the invitation of the Foundation Ethics Society. So and again, I personally thank you, sir. Thank you. So we'll catch up again. So yeah. Thanks a lot. Thank you, everyone. Sure. Thank you.